Hi everybody, this is Bill. Uh, we got a we got our a special guest here tonight. We'd like to uh, start adding him as a regular contributor to our crowd. Uh, Rakesh, welcome to the call. Uh, thank you, Bill. Thank you for having me here. It's very good to have you. So I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, about his background, and then we'll go ahead and get started with some with some Q and A stuff um, as we go along. Um, he's going to give you a little bit more advanced um, information about trading and about you know he has a trading background and he understands and he's a contributing editor for places like hack.com and oilprice.com and exchange rates. Um, I find him pretty regularly on Cointelegraph. It's called Cointelegraph, the future of money. And I've been watching him for a, for quite a while. He didn't know that, but I just reached out to him and, and wondered if he could be one of our contributors. And he said, yes. So we're honored to have him on the call. You know, some of his stuff is, uh, is more advanced than our crowd is used to, but I want to start bringing you guys into some of the understanding of, you know, some traditional trading stuff. So again, welcome to the call and uh, glad to have you here. Well, thank you, Bill. So, uh, you know, we talked last time, we actually did this call last week before, before vacation started and I recorded it and it crashed and burned for whatever reason. But um, so here's, here's our first question, you know, from a traditional traders perspective, you know, you got a lot of trading background and watching charts and graphs and, I see that you've been doing this for a while. Um, what do you see as the biggest difference between Bitcoin uh, charting and maybe traditional stock market? Uh, the main difference that I find, Bill, is the time zones are squeezed. Uh, some things that would happen on a traditional stock market on the stocks in probably years happens within a few weeks or at best a few months in uh, the cryptocurrency world. Uh, secondly, the uh, cryptocurrency market overshoots the targets by a huge margin. Uh, by any guess of imagination, nobody would have given a target of 20,000 on Bitcoin at the start of the year. So whatever targets we give, it just keeps overshooting it by a huge margin. It sometimes becomes difficult for us to uh, locate the next possible target on uh, the cryptocurrency. And it's hugely volatile. Uh, the Rallies are equally uh, sharp, and the fall are also uh, very, very sharp. So this is the main difference I find between these markets. Yeah, as I've as I've been watching other traders, and you know, watching the traditional traders, and I watched them for about a year before I ever really jumped in. And one of the things that I've noticed is that it almost always overshoots the possible um, scenarios, almost 100% of the time. So, you know, they'll project it to be 10,000, it ends up being 15. Um, I also noticed that like on this last pullback that the pullback was even greater than most people assumed. So the volatility on both, both realms um, seem to be more extreme. Is that what you see too? Absolutely. Absolutely. Point a hundred percent correct. I've noticed that um, when we were in, let's say before the last push to 20 K, you know, we were actually heading toward the $20,000 mark. And it seemed to be on a parabolic just jump. It was just kept on going, you know, 10, 20% a week. Um, mm -hmm. it, changed, it changed a little bit of its pattern and just started moving full speed ahead toward 20. Right before that, what I saw anyway was that um, the projections toward the tops were always underestimated and the tops were always higher than, than they ever assumed. And the bottoms were not quite as low as anybody assumed. So it was actually growing faster than most people assumed. But now, now that the corrections have come in, we got a pretty big correction. I mean, <sighs> It went down to fifty percent. I mean, we had we had sell-offs from twenty thousand all the way down to ten mm -hmm. on some of the exchanges. Ten thousand three hundred thirteen was some of the was the lowest point of mm -hmm. the of the tail, and mm -hmm. uh, that's a fifty percent drop, which was huge. I mean, he way more than most people expected. Um, are you expect you expect to see this kind of uh, craziness continue, or you think it's going to settle out soon? As the markets mature, I think it's going to settle out, Bill, because uh, this kind of a fall and a rise is not sustainable in the long term. You would hardly have any in, uh, investors or traders left if this continues for probably another year or two. Right. So one of the things uh, one of the things that we see are most most traders are um, they basically talk about two possibilities. They talk about well, if we if we reach at this level, we'll probably go up. If we reach this level, we'll probably go down. Um, mm -hmm. Until just recently, I was I was pretty strong on the uh, on the bullish. For those of you who don't know, the difference between a bull and a bear 
you know, when we talk about bullish, it means we're, we're pretty positive on the market. We think it's going to go up. If we're bearish on the market, it means we're probably thinking it's going to back up a little bit that it's on, it's, it's on a downward, downward perspective. So up until this last pullback, um, everyone seemed to be pretty, pretty positive on, on its growth. You think we're going to see that, that continue? Uh, that's been one of my worries, Will, because uh, most of the traders uh, in the cryptocurrency world uh, these days are pretty new. They are not accustomed to trading. What they have seen over the past year is whenever correction happens in Bitcoin or most of the major currencies, it just shoots back up. So there's a feeling that, okay, whatever happens, supposing even if I have purchased at 18K or 19K and the market currently is at 13.5K or uh, round about that figure, they have a belief that, okay, it'll again shoot up, it'll go to 25K, 30K, I just need to hold on strong. Uh, but this is not likely to happen always. Uh, we would have a period of consolidation, even a period of correction. It is going to test most of the investors, long-term investors who are uh, currently in the market. I see that phase panning out in the next year. But right now, I'm not very sure uh, what would be the lower and the upper range that will uh, hold the market inside. I think the market would pass that phase. Most would probably uh, stay away from Bitcoin for some time. And then the next rally would start. This is just an expectation that I have. Right. I'm, I'm under the assumption watching it for just, you know, I've only been watching it for a year or so. And I'm not a really, you know, a long-term experienced trader with stock market. But, you know, I think that a lot of what we're seeing is adoption from a lot of inexperienced traders. You know, we really haven't had the we haven't had the trader come in. We've had the average Joe come in, you know, whether it's the Chinese crowd, the Asian, the Asian influence, a um, little bit of, little bit of Australia and the U S most of these people that are coming in are um, non-traditional traders. So it's a big emotional swing, right? You know, we're seeing, we're seeing okay. the, we're seeing the news influence the trade more than anything else. Right. Absolutely. Uh, because even in uh, the place that where I stay in India, it's a small town. But here, people have the feeling that, okay, there's something called as Bitcoin. They have uh, no idea what it is, but you need to invest in it because your money will grow. So I don't uh, feel that when such kind of crowd comes in, the rally is sustainable. Because usually, uh, the amateurs of this kind, they come in the very fag end of the rally. So we need to, uh, we need to probably uh, shake them out. And when the strong hand remains, then the next leg would start. This is uh, this is my expectation for Bitcoin as of now. Yeah, we're seeing um, because it's a traditional investor too. I think we're seeing it kind of flatline for the holidays because you know the average guy's just distracted with family, and we've just seen it just you know you know die out. And there's not a whole lot of a whole lot of momentum going on. Uh, one of the things, if this is the if this is the push. You know, what we've seen traditionally is the push comes from word of mouth, you know, the, and right now with everybody spending time with Christmas and New Year's, their brothers and their sisters and their uncles are all going to talk to them about Bitcoin. And we should potentially we should see a really nice big rally at the first of the year. You know, once everybody gets home and starts uh, starts investigating and putting some money in these accounts, unless, of course, the 50 uh, percent backup scared people away. Right. Mm, no, I uh, at least I have a feeling that people have still not lost hope. Uh, they still believe that this is just one more correction in the uh, never-ending bull run that uh, Bitcoin is seeing. So uh, most have purchased already. Uh, even for the folks who had sold uh, around about 18k or uh, that that uh, around 20k, they have already gotten into it. Now they are holding on with their life. They hope that. It will again go up. I think in January there should be an attempt to uh, pull back. I am not sure that it is going to succeed. I expect it to fail somewhere around 16,500, 17,000 uh, mark. Let's see. All right. So, um, we're going to have a lot of questions over the next few months. We're going to be watching it together. Hopefully, uh, we can we can talk couple times a week one of the things I'd love to talk to you about and uh, show some of the show some of the users is uh, to give them some some understanding of what they're looking at when they're looking at charts you know because um, you know a lot of people are looking at their GDAX or on their Bitrix which are the two ones that I'm uh, I'm showing people their Bitrix mm -hmm. accounts 
um, you know, there's a lot of little details that would help them trade better. You know, what is a depth chart? You know, what are we looking at? What are we looking at? And what, what do we expect when we look at these things? What are, you know, some of our trend lines and some of our, uh, um, you know, the difference between just some of the simple things, like most of the traders that we talk to, they don't know what the, they don't know what these little t tails are on the candles. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of little stuff that I'd love to have you help us um, understand. So maybe next time we'll talk about that kind of stuff. Certainly. Whatever uh, helps the traders, I'm all for it, Bill. All right, everybody. Stay tuned for the next call. We will uh, keep you informed. We have more than we can possibly talk about in our, in our short little uh, 10, 20-minute sessions. So stay tuned. Stay subscribed. We'll see you on the next one.